Welcome to Module 4, the final module of Steps to Success in Grant Fundraising. In this module, you will learn how to create winning bids for grants. The key to making successful applications is understanding and communicating how your organisation will deliver on the objectives of the grant funder. Throughout this series of learning, you have built your understanding of how to be more successful in grant fundraising and the steps needed. The first step is grounding your grant fundraising in your charitable purpose, making sure that it is helping you deliver your strategy, supporting your delivery model and impact you want to have, and meeting your funding need to do this. This was covered in Module 1. The second step is targeting your grant fundraising to funders who enable you to deliver your strategy well. Understanding the types of grants and grant funders will help you to do this, as covered in Module 2 and finding the right funders for you to target was covered in Module 3. Better understanding grant fundraising means you can identify and apply to funders who are most aligned to your charity, which will make communicating common purpose easier. The final step of communicating that shared value is often the starting point for people who want to be better at grant fundraising. But this step is so much easier and likely to be successful if you have done the groundwork of steps one and two. If you have completed those first two steps, you will have a theory of change and a case for support to draw from, a defined funding model to be clear with the funder what they will be funding, and you will have identified the types of funds and funders you want to work with. This will help you tell your story well and with confidence because it is to an audience that is receptive and you will have common ground to communicate about. In this module, you will learn about the types of applications, what matters to grant assessors, and how to write more concisely. First, the types of application process. There are three main types of process, letter of support, application forms, and multi-stage applications. Starting with the letter of success. With over 8,500 charitable trusts and foundations making grants to organisations, ranging in size and setup, there are a large number that do not have a formal application process. Instead, they invite you to write a letter of support detailing what you need and how much. Historically, there has been a practice of sending standardised appeal letters en masse to this type of trust and foundation. But this means standing out is really tough particularly as many of them won't have a large grant assessment team, and this is now considered poor fundraising practice. But it is important to consider that just because the application process is easier, it doesn't mean there won't be conditions that are unfavourable to your charity. To increase your likelihood of success with letters of support, target your asks to those charitable trusts and foundations you have researched which support charities like yours. Next, make a connection with the charity before you make an ask. If they don't have a website, look at Charity Commission and see who is named on their accounts or if you can connect with any of their trustees. This way, you can establish what is really important to them so you can pull this out in your writing. You can test if you are a good fit and make sure that they know who your charity are when it comes to filtering asks. These funders get countless letters every day. So think creatively about how you can make yours stand out amongst the appeals. This doesn't have to be a printed appeal leaflet, that might be too generic, but is there a story you can tell, use of images or graphics that will make it stand out in a sea of text, a layout that can make it a relief for the reviewer to see? Your case for support will help with this. Next, application forms. Most charities will be most familiar with this approach. All types of grant funders will use application forms because for them it is easier to standardise the process so they can filter asks. But these can be quite difficult. Questions can feel repetitive, working out how to fit what you want to say in and navigating the budget template to fit your budgets. So how can you make this process easier? Very often we start with the questions before we've done the work to map out what we are going to do and what we need. So do look at the questions and check for anything unexpected, like a policy or approach, and then put it away. Go back to your theory of change in case for support. 
make sure you understand what you are going to do, why, how and how much you are asking for. Then check this against what they are looking for and find the common ground to talk about. These will be your key messages. Then reopen the application form, match your key messages to the answers. Once you have completed the application form, check you've got the most important messages into your answers and if there is anything missing. Online application processes can be inaccessible and difficult to navigate. If it's online, you can't always see the questions. So you can ask the funder for a list of questions or create a draft online application, put in holder text, copy and paste the questions into a Word document. Another relatively unknown tip is that you can in fact open a PDF in Word. Save it, open Word and open the PDF from the file location. It will make it editable and save time on copying and pasting. Draft offline. There is little more heartbreaking than filling in an application form for it to crash and your work be lost. So if something needs editing, keep taking it out of the online form and copy and paste it back in. This also means you have a usable copy of your submission. And finally, expect the unexpected with online portals. They can be tricky. Don't leave it to the last minute as it can be really stressful. Finally, multi-stage applications. You will most likely be most familiar with these applications either in procurement or lottery. They are designed to filter the number of applications received and identify charities and projects most likely to be successful. This saves time both for those applying and those assessing and making decisions. The top 300 funders may use these where their programmes are very competitive as well as lottery distributors. Although these processes can seem daunting, they are actually designed to save time for charities. Some have more flexible expression of interest stages like videos or shorter applications, so do take advantage of these. Not everything has to be written. And many will provide support for the full project application stage, advice and guidance, webinars, and sometimes funding. These grants are often about collaboration between funder and charity and supporting the charity to gain from the process. However, getting to the second stage is not guaranteed success. So, to make the most of these, it's important to consider before committing to the process. What will you gain from it? Will it put you in a stronger position regardless of the outcome? Is there work you have to do as part of it that will help you in other ways? And secondly, what will you do with all that work you've completed if you are not funded? In this second part of the module, Making Winning Applications, you will learn what matters to grant assessors. Once you've submitted your application, there can be many stages and it may, might be seen by several different people and groups before a decision is made. So let's look at how this might happen. You're, you make an application, it's received by a grant assessor or officer or a team of them. And increasingly, we will see software that uses a first filter for eligibility and suitability of application. So using the phrases they've used is important as a keyword finder. That team will review applications and decide which are best fit for funding. They will send that shortlist or recommendations to a grants panel who will make the final decision. Sometimes that might go to trustees, sometimes a panel of different representatives. And the lots of trusts and foundations, all applications go straight to trustees who will review everything that comes in. So why is this important? because you have several processes to stand out through and you need to understand what is important to the people making decisions. So we asked a team of grant assessors what they looked for in applications they receive. They told us there were four main things, trust, relevance, whether your proposal is realistic and clarity of what you will do and what you need. Starting with trust, at its best, Grant funding is a mutual relationship. The funder can't achieve their objectives without the organisations they fund. They want to support charities which enable them to deliver their purpose. But how can you build and demonstrate trust through the application process? Firstly, communicate with confidence. You are the organisation with knowledge, skill and relationships to deliver your shared objectives. Communicate that. Have faith in yourself and demonstrate that you recognise the role you play and why they want to work with you. This demonstrates that you want an equal relationship. 
Be open about where you are as a charity. If you've had problems with annual returns, tell them about it, but reassure about the action you've taken or are taking. If you're testing something, state that. And if the bid involves a new partnership, talk about why it is important and what you will do to make it work. And tell them what you need. Do not second guess what they want to hear or how much they want to give. Give the full budget you need and ask for it if you want it from them. Be clear what will happen if you don't get all that you're asking for. Your funding model is really important here. Next, relevance. How is what you do relevant to the funder? If you've screened the opportunity well, you'll have understood that there is alignment, but you need to make sure that the person reading your application, who will be reading many, many more, can easily make the connection that you have. So how can you demonstrate relevance in your applications? First of all, check that it is relevant, and if it isn't, don't apply. People reading bids can tell if you are bending to fit their needs. It comes out in inconsistencies, lack of clarity, the language you use, and the budget you present. So really check, and if it feels like there are too many compromises, don't apply. But if you are aligned and you can see how their funding will help you deliver services, strategy and impact, then talk about that. Use your statements from your case for support and simply add, this supports your ambition too, and talk about our shared objectives. And finally, incorporate their language. This might sound counter to the guidance to use your organisation's voice, but if there are particular phrases they use, fit them into your responses. And if incorporating their language means losing your voice or using language that goes against your approach and values, that's a good test to see if this really is a good fit for you. Next, being realistic. Is your proposal achievable? Funders are trusting you to deliver on shared objectives. To have this trust, they need to know that what you are proposing is realistic and achievable in terms of timescales, numbers of people, scale of impact, and deliverability within the budget you are requesting. So how can you demonstrate that? Be clear on your intention and what you are setting out to do. Being realistic doesn't mean you can't be ambitious or you can't test new ways of working, but be really clear when this is the case. If they are asking for you to deliver at levels that are unachievable, either don't apply because it's a poor fit or be honest about what you can achieve and why. They may not fund you, but you aren't risking your reputation or the quality of your services. Show your logic. Return to your theory of change or logic model, and then test your assumptions about delivery with the people who will deliver it. This comes back to deciding whether to apply. Can it be done well without negative impact on other services or areas of work? Conversations with your delivery teams may come up with new ways of working or more information about how this is achievable. Talk about your track record. If you know it's achievable because you've done before, tell them and share the information. And explain how it fits in your charity. If this is something new, explain how it fits with your current delivery and strategy. Be open about the potential risks and how you are mitigating them. One of the main things that funders are looking for is that the ask is proportional to what you are doing as an organisation and how much you can deliver. Finally, clarity. This is an area that grant assessors often struggle with the most when reviewing applications. What are you going to do? What impact will you have? What do you need from them to do it? It's an area we get most caught up in when writing bids wanting to sound professional and wanting to impress with data. But often, when we try too hard to impress, we miss the opportunity to communicate what is really important, our knowledge, skills, and why we are the right people to deliver this, pro this program. So how to demonstrate clarity? Start away from the application form, return to your theory of change or create one for this project. Find clarity on who, what, when, where, how and impact, and explain your delivery model clearly. As we learned in module one, your budget should be based on what you need. Set your budget in your own way first, then match to the funder's template. You don't 
need to be afraid to put in lines for monitoring and evaluation, marketing, or anything else that's a direct cost for delivering this programme. Next, use plain English. This comes back to finding your voice and your key messages and communicating consistently. Funders don't need to be wowed by the clever use of language. They need to understand your message. And finally, have one person who writes your responses. This is really important for consistency. We will cover more about writing and editing in the next part of this module. In this final part of the module, Making Winning Applications, you will learn some top tips for writing more clearly and concisely. Firstly, don't worry about the word count. In fact, don't worry about the application form. First of all, work out what you need to say, your delivery model and the theory of change. Then work out where that information fits in the application form. And finally, write your answers with disregard for the word count. Write what you want, however it flows. Doing the groundwork with your case for support and theory of change will really help with this because you will be clearer on what you want to say and how. Secondly, don't take editing personally. Often, when we've written something, we can be really protective of it, particularly if we are proud of it, but we can't be too precious if there is a word count to meet. Once you've written everything down, go back and edit closer to the word count. At this stage, don't work too hard to achieve it, as someone else will be casting an eye before you get to that stage. Then, hand it to someone who knows what the grant is, and what is needed, and what you are going to do. Ask them to suggest edits, what reads well, what needs work. Knowledge of the subject matter will mean that they don't edit out important information. And finally, Ask someone who isn't familiar with the project to do the proofread. They are looking for errors in general flow and clarity. They will point out things that don't really make sense. Next tip is to avoid filler. This is a good rule in general for writing concisely. We have a tendency to add unnecessary words or colloquialisms. There are lots of examples of these online and we recommend searching for a tips to write more concisely to support the ones that you tend to do. But also avoid filler answers. Sometimes if you've written 200 words for a 500 word answer you might feel like you've missed something but if you are satisfied you've communicated everything you need don't fill. It will undermine what you've written and the person who's reviewing the application already has a lot to read. Don't add to it unnecessarily. Next, use tools to help. There are a number of writing concisely guides available on the internet with some great simple tips. There is also software that you can use to help you write more concisely, which will offer suggestions for better sentence structure. Microsoft Word has an editor function that can do this, and there are other free ones available online. These aren't our AI, but software that looks at what you've written and makes suggested improvements. But we do know that a lot of people are curious about AI and how it might play a role in bid writing. It is expected that in the near future, generative AI like ChatGPT will play a significant role in generating content, analysing data and completing forecasting activities for charities. For small charities in particular, this will be incredibly powerful and help them to do so much more with limited resources. However, this technology is still emerging and we would recommend any charity looking to use it explores further training, risk assessment and ensures that it doesn't leave the charity vulnerable to non-compliance with GDPR, your organisational information being added into the system for others to use and to be aware of the inaccuracies that technology can generate. We know that for generative AI to work best, it needs all of the things that you will do as you create your theory of change and case for support. Clear parameters of who, what, when, where, why. Clear identification of what is important for the ways that you work, like strengths-based approaches. Data on both need and impact. And remember that the insights of your organisation can't be found through AI, and they're often the most important to communicate to funders and the concise statements that reflect your charity's voice. If you have spent time on these, then you will be ready to use generative AI to respond to specific questions, 
once your charity has fully assessed and understood its role in your organisation. In this module, you have learned about the different types of application, letters of support, application forms and multi-stage applications. You've learnt who might use these and what to be aware of to be more successful. You've learnt what matters to grant funders, trust, relevance, realism and clarity and how you can demonstrate these in your applications. And finally, how to write more concisely and the importance of identifying your key messages, editing and using tools to help.